Greetings. I'm Tom Miller, and this is a series of lectures recorded for the DePaul Sound Recording Technology Program. Today we're going to take a look at the fundamentals of digital audio and analog to digital conversion. Analog tape incorporates the signal into the medium, and any imperfections or unique characteristics of that medium are forever impressed on the audio signal. In the case of magnetic recording, this is manifested primarily as tape hiss and dynamic compression. This is why making an analog copy of an analog tape doubles the amount of hiss and after several generations becomes completely unusable. So, we need a system which ignores any noise components of the storage medium. Enter digital recording. The string of numbers is independent of the medium it is recorded on. We can store digital information on tape, on hard drives, on floppy disk. The role of a properly designed digital audio system is to accurately translate a continuous flow of analog information into a corresponding stream of discrete digital words, usually referred to as a bit stream. Because we are storing discrete digital words, digital tape adds no noise. Dynamic range is now not a function of the tape, but of the number of bits, and digital copies are exact clones of the original. Sound, whether naturally occurring or electronically generated, can be broken down into two fundamental components, frequency and amplitude. Similarly, digital audio can also be broken down into two components. The first is sample rate. Sample rate addresses the frequency component of the audio. Within a digital audio system, the sample rate is defined as the number of samples that are taken of an analog signal in a second's time. Its reciprocal, sampling time, is the time taken between each sample period. For example, a sample rate of 44.1 kHz, 44,100 samples per second, corresponds to a sample period of 1 44,000th one hundredth of a second. Sample rate is tied directly to the component of time. The sample rate of a system will determine a system's upper frequency limits with higher sampling rates yielding a greater frequency range or bandwidth. In 1929, Harry Nyquist published The Mathematical Foundation of Digital Recording in a lengthy paper entitled Certain Topics in Telegraph Transmission Theory. This article continued his earlier report about improving the speed of telegraph transmissions, but he also proposed the basics of sampling continuous analog signals and converting them into a digital form. Nyquist stated what is now referred to as the Nyquist Theorem. Any waveform must be sampled at least twice during the period of that waveform to be reconstructed accurately. Therefore, the sample rate, also known as the Nyquist rate, needs to be twice the highest frequency that you want to capture. To record bandwidth up to 20 kHz, the range of human hearing, you would have to have a sample rate of at least 40 kHz. The second part of the Nyquist theorem states that the spectrum between the highest recorded frequency and the sample rate, in this case between 20 kHz and 40 kHz, must be filtered out. Waveforms that exist in this spectrum will be incorrectly rendered because there are not two samples per period. If not filtered out, these waveforms will create audio artifacts in the audible spectrum, a process called aliasing. In this example, a 36 kHz signal was not filtered out and sampled at 44 kHz. Because there are not two samples per period, the waveform is folded down into the audio spectrum and is perceived as an 8 kHz signal. The sample rate of the compact disc was set at 44.1 kHz in the early 1980s. This allowed the system to sample the full range of human hearing while allowing some spectral room for the filter. This is an example of a recording from a CD I recorded in the old DePaul studio. This is recorded at the sample rate of 44.1 kHz. Let's 
speak only in slips of the tongue. And as we pass through the rooms and then the stairs, but I couldn't send a ground that got me. So magic just a trick of the lights, sparkling skies full of black holes. Stories from a private garden on the bed It's just an old story I like to sleep by. We can move. In the early days of the internet, one way to bring down file size and therefore transfer time was to cut the sample rate. Here is the same recording with the sample rate cut in half to 22.05 kilohertz. Legend King of Quiet Talk Follow me and I'm the just but to me We speak only in slips of the tongue And as we pass we the names and then the stairs But I couldn't send the ground that got me So magic just a trick of the lights Sparkling skies full of black holes Stoxies from a private god on the baby hole here is the same recording with the sample rate cut in half again to 11 kilohertz. At this point, we have a bandwidth of just over 5k. Legend King of Quiet Talk. Follow me and I'm just but to me. We speak only in slips of the tongue. And as we pass through the rooms and then the stairs, but I couldn't send the ground that got me. So magic just to drink up the lights. Sparkling skies full of black holes. Stoxies from a private car on the red road. It's just an old story I like to sleep by. We can move. And just for fun, here's the same recording with the sample rate cut in half again to 5 kilohertz. Let the king of quiet talk Follow me and I'm the first of the day We speak only in slips of the tongue Now we're passing and then we're in the sand But I couldn't stand the ground I've got the amplitude component of the digital sampling process is represented by quantization. In this process, the amplitude of the incoming analog signal is broken down into a series of discrete voltage steps. Because there is a discrete number of voltage levels, the analog signal will be squared off, introducing harmonics that were not in the original recording. Therefore, in the digital to analog conversion process, we have to pass the resulting wave through a low-pass filter, called a reconstruction filter or smoothing filter, to remove those harmonics and recover the original waveform. The number of voltage levels is dependent on the number of bits assigned to each sample. This number is known as the sample bit depth. An 8-bit binary word would give us 256 levels. This is determined by 2 to the 8th. The compact disc utilized a 16-bit word, which gives us 65,536 levels. A 20-bit word gives us 1,048,576 steps, and 24 bits give us over 16 million steps. 16-bit is highly accurate. If sheets of typing paper were stacked to 22 feet, a single sheet of paper would represent one quantization level. With a 20-bit system, the stack of paper would be 349 feet. With a 24-bit system, the stack of paper would be 5,592 feet. If the distance between New York and L.A. were measured at 24-bit accuracy, the measurement would be accurate to 9 inches. From the preceding list, you can conclude that greater word lengths translate directly into increased resolution. But also, each additional power of 2 halves the spacing between adjacent branches in the binary tree. This produces an approximate increase of 6 dB for each additional bit. 
Increased bit depth also gives you more dynamic range. For a 16-bit system, 6 times 16 gives you about 96 dB of dynamic range. Here is the same recording from the CD, 44.1 sample rate, 16-bit. Legend King of Quiet Talk Follow me and I'm a church bird to me We speak only in slips of the tongue And as we pass we hang hands and hang our stairs But our curse and the ground have got me Some magic just to trick of the lights Sparking skies full of black holes Stoltons from a private god on the way home Insufficient bit depth can create a situation where the analog value being sampled falls between two digital levels. When this happens, the analog value must be moved to the nearest digital value, resulting in an error. This error, the difference between the continuous analog waveform and the stair step digital representation, is referred to as quantization error. For a sine wave, quantization error will appear as extra harmonics in the signal. For music, the signal is constantly changing, and quantization error appears as wideband noise, cleverly referred to as quantization noise. Here is the same recording from the CD at a 44.1 kHz sample rate and 8-bit depth. Notice the bandwidth doesn't change, but you can hear the noise generated by the quantization error. Legend King of Quiet Talk Follow me and I'm a church bird to me We speak only in slips of the tongue And as we pass we hang hands and hang our stairs But our curse and the ground have got me Some magic just a trick of the lights Sparking skies full of black holes Instructions from a private god on the way home Sampling and quantization create a string of numbers that has to be organized into a file that computers can recognize. Some file types store all the information that is sampled, 16 bits, 44,100 times a second. This type of file is referred to as uncompressed, or PCM, standing for pulse code modulation. In this type of file, 10 seconds of silence takes the same number of bytes as 10 seconds of music. True audio engineers insist on uncompressed files for high quality audio. Data compressed audio formats such as MP3 trade quality for file size. Clearly, a digital file is just a long string of 16-bit samples, and a file containing just those numbers is called a raw data file. But in an audio program, we need more information, like sample rate, bit depth, mono or stereo, and it would be nice to be able to add text information, such as artist or copyright. This information is stored in the header. Now, one of the most popular digital formats today is WAV. A WAV file is a type of resource interchange file format, a format developed by Microsoft and IBM all the way back in Windows 3. This is a wave file of a monaural 1 kHz sine wave. Sine waves are unique in the fact that they have no overtones. Early German electronic composers referred to them as the atom of music. If we zoom in, we can actually see the discrete sample levels. While computers use binary numbers, they are huge and unwieldy, and to look at file data, we usually use hexadecimal numbering. Hexadecimal is base 16. The digits are numbered 0 through 9, and then A through F. And a digital byte can be represented by only two digits. A WAV file is divided into chunks. The first chunk tells the computer this file is a resource interchange file format. And this RIF chunk contains 12 bytes. The first four are the ASCII numbers for RIFF. The next four bytes tell the computer how many more bytes there are in the RIF chunk. And the last four bytes are the ASCII numbers for WAVE. The second chunk is the format information. 
This is crucial information because it contains the clocking information that tells the system how fast to play the file. The first four bytes are the ASCII numbers for format, FMT blank. The next four bytes indicate how many more bytes are in the format chunk. The next four bytes indicate PCM, pulse code modulation coding, and a monaural sound file. The next four bytes give the sample rate, in this case 44.1 kilohertz. The next four bytes indicate the bytes per second, and the last eight bytes indicate bytes per second and bits per second. The final chunk is the data chunk. The first four bytes are the ASCII numbers for data, and the next four indicate the data chunk length. This is followed by the digital values created in the sampling process. File formats come and go. Pro Tools created a file format called Sound Designer 2, which they demanded that you use, and then suddenly quit supporting again. File formats will continue to get more sophisticated. Additional information such as original timestamp, looping data, and metadata such as copyright are now standard in many file formats.